Hey, how's it going? Dylan here. This is just a quick uh, little video on my new uh, update to the Anamorphic Depth of Field for Unreal Engine, which is available in the Marketplace and over on my Kofi as well. So, uh, this week I have added uh, a highly requested feature or fix for an issue in lots and lots of depth of field implementations, which is basically a sample rejection uh, or depth sample rejection in terms of the blur. Um, so, so essentially what that is, is uh, some people have messaged me and obviously I, I know this is an issue, um, it's generally an issue in lots and lots of these implementations where um, the blur is happening on the whole screen and essentially it doesn't have the information obviously because this is, we're not rendering the information behind this um, post box. Uh, and so as a result, um, even though this post box is in focus, um, the background gets blurred with because the it's supposed to be blurred. And when it blurs, it actually because it's a you know area based blur, it blurs the information from this post box into the background, and you get these really annoying bad looking halos, especially in a situation like this. This is specifically one of the worst case scenarios that I've uh, set up here very quickly. Just a really bright point light right hitting the top of this post box and getting lots of specular hits and a darker background so as you can see we get a halo even when there's not a huge brightness difference you can still see the outline here um, which you know doesn't really work especially if you're doing shots like this where you're focusing on something really close to the foreground and want to have the background really nice and blurred so essentially i've implemented depth checking which isn't a be all end all um, it's not on by, by default because it is more expensive um, in this implementation. I have to figure out how to optimize it a little bit, but for now, it's just not enabled by default. Bit of an experimental feature or bug fix for specific shots where you encounter this issue. Um, so essentially, what I will do, um, so all we have to do is find our anamorphic camera, which is this guy. So down in the anamorphic camera settings, there's a few new settings that I've added, which is these two here. Um, we've got depth rejection and depth rejection bias. So essentially, um, if you're watching this, this is in default mode, you've got your halo there, and if I enable this, as you can see, it is almost entirely um, disappeared, essentially. Well, it, actually the halo has disappeared. Um, you do get tiny little bits of artifacts sometimes when there's a bright spot in the background um, but you know it's it's a trade-off really um, depending on how you want to go because obviously we still don't have the information behind here so I have to get the information from somewhere um, essentially uh, but it does produce a pretty nice result uh, as you can see it's completely gone now the main control of this is the depth rejection bias so essentially this is like a, a bias to how far away um, you want to throw out samples or the distance between samples essentially um, so the distance between this point here and this point here is larger than this threshold essentially uh, and then it throws out that sample so if I move this for example outward you can see at about as I as I increase this um, we get the halo back so you can kind of see how it works so Essentially, you would just um, probably keyframe this in the sequencer per shot if you had multiple different shots. Uh, and sometimes you, like one setting didn't work for didn't one but worked for another. Um, so essentially, it's nice and easy. You can kind of set it where you'd want it. And there you go. You're pretty much essentially done. Um, no halo anymore around the foreground object.